I had a uh, uh, concert with uh, Stephen Rappelli and um, I, I looked um, to his uh, violin case. He had a beautiful scarf um, and I asked him uh, where you have that uh, scarf from and he told me uh, when Django dies um, it was the, the wife uh, of Django Nagin uh, that gave uh, Grappelli that scarf and it was the scarf uh, of uh, Django Reinhardt and uh, it was so beautiful because uh, Stefan Grappelli told me that he always take that uh, he takes care of uh, uh, this scarf um, in his uh, filing case <laughs> When I talk uh, about uh, this project, uh, Jungle Logists, uh, with uh, uh, they said also that uh, the 100 years uh, of Django in 2010, uh, we must uh, do something uh, special with this. So uh, when we decide to, 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 to make uh, this uh, album Jungle Logist, um, just before uh, we, we had the dates for the studio, uh, Birali Laren calls me and uh, I said, uh, "Bon, now we're going to, to, to make that, uh, that Django CD and what do you think uh, if you, if you uh, play something uh, with me on this, uh, on this uh, CD? And actually he was very cool, he said, no problem. And, I, he gave me uh, some dates and uh, we make it happen. Well, we make uh, this uh, project a digital release is because um, I want to give my fans something more for this 100 years of Django because uh, actually uh, we can give them for a very low price uh, uh, about a 60 minute uh, movie and uh, we have 24 tracks I, I think uh, in the Gypsy Jazz, uh, the, the, there are not a lot of uh, CDs with 24 tracks uh, and uh, actually uh, also it gives me a little bit more freedom to uh, produce uh, what I want.
Devam on
Müşkeledi kalmamışa.
So. You change a little bit the sound. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Django is always um, Django is a state of the art. You know, it's like uh, he's part of our life. I mean, you know, at least my life, and uh, I'm sure Stupolo's too. And um, we wake up every day with him, and he's you know, he's a, a maestro. I would say. I could tell uh, a lot about Django Reinhardt, and I'm sure Stupolo would could tell a lot about Django Reinhardt too. For us gypsy people, you know, it's like Django, you know, it's like, uh, he was a very interesting person. Not only because of his music and of his talent as a guitar player, but uh, he was, you know, the, 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 the person, the character was, uh, was amazing. And uh, there are a few stories for those who know Django, those who read books about Django, they know. So. I leave that up to those people who haven't read Django's book to discover it. If one name should come across is, uh, in this kind of music, is, uh, I think it should be um, Mr. Rosenberg, because uh, Stokola Rosenberg is probably one of the most uh, the guitar player who represents the most the music of Django Ryan.
My name is Adrian Vandenberg. I've toured the world for the last 20 or 25 years or so as a rock guitar player for my bands Vandenberg and Whitesnake. And I was introduced to Django as a kid through an uncle of mine who walked into the room one day and caught me listening to a Jimi Hendrix record. And he said, you think this is guitar playing? I'll show you some guitar playing. So a couple of weeks later he brought in a Django record and he put it on and I was completely blown away. I couldn't believe playing like that was humanly possible, you know. So I wrecked my brains trying to figure out how Django did those harmonies and those arpeggios and his techniques. But there was nobody around to show me and I was a kid, you know. I decided to stick with Hendrix and maybe try to figure it out later. Also looking back um, to the first generation of rock guitar players uh, that were influenced by Django Reinhardt, guys like uh, Jeff Beck, Jimi Hendrix, Eric Clapton, Richie Blackmore, Peter Green of the original Fleetwood Mac, and in Holland, Jan Ackermann. Um, they influenced the generations after that, you know, from the 80s and 90s. And these guys don't even realize they've indirectly been influenced by the techniques and um, the arpeggios from Django Reinhardt. One of the most inspirational stories for anybody, whether you're playing music or not, about Django is uh, for me personally how he um, recovered, completely retrained himself after burning his hands when his wagon burned down, ending up only using two fingers on his left hand. That story should inspire and motivate every musician to try to overcome problems that get in the way of expressing yourself. You know, it's, it's, it's nothing short of incredible that he trained himself to play with just those two fingers on his left hand in such a way that any player, even with all four fingers, will have trouble playing what he played with only two, you know. I was very happy to... Um, to have had the occasion to, uh, to witness Borelli in Stockholm, Nusha and Nani play for this album, you know, it was a huge kick and very inspiring. Borelli and Stockholm were two of the, um, the very best players in the gypsy jazz scene. Well, actually, actually in any scene as far as I'm concerned. And they're both incredibly influential on a huge amount of guitar players all over the world. And for me, um, both as a player and a music lover, they are a constant source of inspiration.
After that, you can play whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> it has been a joke and it still remains a joke. <laughs> Thank you. 
I got ki 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 ki
suivante. Le mouche est là. We have to take this mouche, we shoot him down. Go out from the studio. We don't come station, you know? I have to kill this mouche. Pêche à la mouche. There, she is on the cable, there, she is. You can see, the cable is black, the mouche is black. And when I go to the studio to play the bass, then he came and made me angry, you know. The whole time the mush like this. No concentration. Finito. We shoot them. We shoot this mush. Poof. <laughs> Every gypsy guitar player uh, has a dream to, to, to have a solo. And I had that uh, dream also when I was still very young. I dreamed about someday to, to play uh, on the guitar uh, like John Glenn or the Selma. And 18 years ago uh, I met this guitar. For me it's my, my only one. And the special thing on this guitar is because he's signed with uh, Django Reinhardt and I have seen, uh, have seen some uh, pictures uh, of the Django Reinhardt guitar in uh, the museum in uh, Paris and it, it's actually the same guitar and uh, my number is the 504 and Django has the 503 so uh, that makes me very happy to have uh, a Django guitar in the same series like uh, Django Reinhardt sometimes uh, I'm thinking about maybe Django has trying this guitar also when he had the deal with Selma so he, he tried the 504, he tried the 503, maybe the 5 or two or the five or five, I don't know. And actually, he chose the five or three, I think. But I always m imagine that maybe Django has played this guitar also, just trying something or something. That that makes me uh, uh, that gives me a happy uh, feeling about this guitar.
There was a time I was, I mean, so I was 14, five. no, I was 14 years, yeah, before I played the bass. And we was with the trailer to go to French. And we was nearby, I, I believe so, it was Metz and Aussie, I don't know, one of these towns. And there was a big, uh, big place, uh, like a uh, parking. And every year, the gypsies travel the same way. And I mean, so there was uh, 20, 20 trailers, and it was in the just in a, in a, in a day. And, 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 and my father, he, he said to me, "Take your guitar and uh, we try to play together." And at this moment, my, my father, we was playing with my father, and, and, and there was a caravan, and maybe uh, 50 meters from there, and there was a man with his wife sitting down by his cabin he was eating something and he heard that my father he was playing like uh, the, the, the the melodies from jungle at this moment we was a play and he heard us and that we we played that and in that moment okay uh, and this man he began to speak with my father and you know he told us the story he was the brother in law from Django and everything. Oh, for, for, for us, was this like a dream. You know, we remember me from uh, just from the records, you know, and the photos. And uh, there was a brother from Django, Joseph. And we was very young. And now we, we think about that we uh, meet, uh, meeting this uh, man. And my father, he take his guitar with him and he play together with him. And in the moment that we played together there, uh, there came a one of this one of, one of the women. She came, and she crying. She was she wasn't crying. And then uh, one of the guys asked her why she cried. Okay. It was the the sister from Django. You know she remembered her brother. She tell uh, stories from Django and everything. For me, was it like like a dream? And for my father, same. While my father, he was a big fan from Django. And at this moment, he played with uh, the brother and law from Django. Oh, that was really for my father, was it like, uh, like a dream. And for me, it was the big dream. Okay. Never I think about that we played with this man. Never I uh, think to myself that I, I, I play with these people. You know? After this, I play with uh, Stefan Grappelli and, you know, my dream is a big dream, just what I like, you know, I take it with me in my heart. <laughs>